everyone and welcome to Springfield Indians Hockey. I'm Mike Barrick and tonight the Springfield Indians take on the Northern Division Fredericton Express. My guest on our corner show this evening is the president of the Springfield Indians, Peter Cooney. And Peter, first of all, this is the first game back for the Springfield Indians since the Christmas holidays. How was Santa for you and uh, was he pretty good to you? Pretty good in Glens Falls last night, Mike. Although this is a delayed broadcast, it was pretty good. Uh, uh, in Glens Falls Thursday night before a big crowd up there against the Adirondack Red Wings. We came off with two points on the road. Uh, we sweated down near the end and uh, it was pretty good overall to come off with two points. And of course tonight I'd like to grab some work home and have a great December when we play Hershey away on an odd Saturday night out of town. Peter, you mentioned the fact that a great December and it sure has. Last year a very good one as well. But the future for the Springfield Indians is going to be tough with the Indians still haven't uh, have yet to play three clubs in the Southern Division on the road, Rochester, Baltimore, and St. Catharines. How do you view the upcoming January swing on the way through for the rest of the season for the Springfield Indians? Well, I don't have the schedule in front of me, but I know that uh, we're playing a lot of Southern Division opponents uh, for about the first uh, three or four weekends in January. I know we uh, have a Hershey and Binghamton series coming up this coming weekend, and then uh, we have Rochester and Baltimore, and I think Maine and New Haven, Maine's Northern Division, they're a good rivalry for our fans anyway, and uh, New Haven, uh, then we have a Sherbrooke and St. Catharines near the end of the month. Uh, it's a good month for us to make hay. When you play the Southern Division uh, opponents, it's a four-point swing every time you win or lose, and so it's a good chance for us to make some hay. Uh, Binghamton's been on a roll lately, uh, and Hershey's a uh, no easy opponent, and uh, I'd rather play our Southern Division opponents every night because I think that's where you develop rivalry and fan interest. Peter, uh, we talked about uh, the Indians' great game on uh, Thursday night against Adirondack, and a newcomer to the Springfield Indians the fans haven't really gotten a chance to see much of, Mark Habscheid, who scored a goal and three assists on Thursday night. Your impressions of the newcomer in the Springfield Indians? Well, Lou Nanny called up earlier today and asked how Habscheid did, and we said, well, he was on for a couple goals, and he had one bounce off his rear end, and that was his only assist of the night, and, or rather his only goal of the night, and uh, he got an assist on the empty netter, so that's all he did. Uh, so we're telling Lou he's doing nothing, but he's been absolutely fabulous for us in two games. Uh, he certainly is an NHL prospect. Uh, he can skate like the wind, and he can put the puck in the net, and maybe that's the difference between him and Shervin is that uh, Shervin uh, was snake, snake bitten, couldn't put the puck in the net, and uh, this guy, uh, Habscheid, can put it in the net, and uh, we'll see again tonight. Uh, the fans at home will get their first chance to see him, I think, on Continental Cable, and uh, I think they'll like what they see in number 18. Peter, uh, we also... Uh have a prospect for the Springfield Indians by the name of Kerry Taku, who stopped 40 of 44 shots on Thursday night. Can he stay here in Springfield the rest of the season the way he, that he has been playing for the Indians? Well, we'd love to have him here. He's a good kid. He's a good family man. Uh, he's uh, from Finland, of course, and uh, he's a big guy. He doesn't take any baloney from the other team, and uh, he'll be good as long as you keep the goaltenders uh, winning and playing pretty good hockey in Minnesota. And as long as no major blockbuster or trade comes up, because I think Taco may be the uh, goaltender of the future of the North Stars. Of course, we've got Mike Sands, and Mike Sands is going to go tonight. Um, there's quite a battle in front of the uh, iron for Minnesota's uh, goalkeeping, and Casey's done a nice job up there so far. But uh, barring injuries and barring a losing streak for Lauren Henning's team, uh, uh, Taco and Sands uh, could be uh, our anchors here in Springfield. And uh, certainly uh, it doesn't hurt uh, them getting that experience for a full year under Fred Creighton and then seeing what they can do in training camp next year. But that'll be quite a battle no matter when. Peter, one final question tonight. The Indians taking on the Fredericton Express. There have been some very physical battles between the two clubs this year. What kind of game do you expect tonight? Well, uh, I know that Dale Henry uh, had some uh, disagreement or a little friction with Mike Stevens, I believe it was, a left winger who's got a lot of penalty minutes for them. And uh, they wanted at each other very badly. However, we've had several days off, the holiday spirit. Uh, however, Fredericton's traveling today after going back and forth uh, to New Brunswick, uh, I think a charter in. They might be a little bit irritable, and I think uh, Dale Henry wants to get it unwound a little bit. We'll see what happens. Uh, we certainly can go with the best of them. The only difference between us and Hershey is that uh, we're quite tough guys, and uh, they've got the top billing as far as uh, being known for being the tough guys. And so uh, tonight could be rough. Uh, this coming Friday uh, against the Hershey Bears and the chicken come in could be even rougher. Okay, Peter. Uh, appreciate you taking the time to come along, and uh, let's hope the Indians can gain a victory tonight against Fredericton. Well, we hope to do that every night, Michael, and thanks a lot. Okay, Peter Cooney, they get our guests this evening on our corner show. Springfield Indians hockey coming right up. The Indians and the Fredericton Express in just a moment.
lot of famous people got their start right here in the schools of Massachusetts. But that's not the only thing these people have in common. You see, they're all people who wouldn't let anything stop them, especially not drugs. So if you go to school around here, don't let drugs stop you. You know, growing up to be famous isn't really important. What is important is that you have the chance to grow up. Continental Cablevision Sports presents the Fredericton Express against the Springfield Indians. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mike Barrick alongside John Forslund from the Springfield Civic Center, where tonight the Springfield Indians look to continue their hot play in the month of December against the Northern Division Fredericton Express. And John, the Indians coming off a tremendous victory on Thursday night after the Christmas holidays against the Adirondack Red Wings and want to continue that and their solid play in December here this evening. They're going to need it, Mike, because potentially this could be one of the best months of the year for the Springfield Indians. 6-2-1 going into tonight's action, looking to increase that mark here tonight, but even more so, the schedule coming up for the Springfield Indians, really extensive, and whenever you can pick up some points, here's an opportunity at home to get a couple of points against Fredericton Club, similar to Springfield, but the Indians showed they had the upper hand last week, so here tonight, they can't let down whatsoever, come out from the start and know that they have a mission, and that's to pick up a victory here and a couple of points over Fredericton. Springfield Indians here at the Springfield Civic Center continue to play extremely well, winning eight of their last ten games at home, going eight and two, and have won five of the last six as well here at the Springfield Civic Center. John, the Indians are going to face a Fredericton club that is loaded as far as offensive players, and of course one is uh, a, a youngster, uh, actually not necessarily a youngster, a veteran that's been around, he can score some points. Well, Tony Curry, the man you're talking about, Mike, with 300 games played in the National Hockey League level, this year picked up by a free agent over the summer by Fredericton. But last week, we saw a Fredericton Express team lacking some offensive punch. Elaine Lemieux, we mentioned him as a big gun, was not really evident in the action. The Express scored late in the game and were routed by Springfield 6-1. Curry is the leading scorer on this team. They're going to look to him for some leadership here tonight and also some goal-scoring punch. You see, he has 18 on the air. He can put the puck in the net. He's been around with St. Louis, Vancouver, Hartford in the National Hockey League, so he's done his stint there. Now his fortunes are in Fredericton. Of course, Curry coming off a big performance on Thursday night in which he scored the hat trick, all three goals on the power play, in a victory over the Moncton Golden Flames. But the Indians have been paced by a newcomer. And boy, when you talk about a guy that really puts on some uh, firepower on the offense, We've seen it in just two games in Mark Havshot. Uh, when we spoke last week, Mike, the Indians had just acquired, or I should say Minnesota had just acquired this man right here, Mark Havshot, who has been a part of the Edmonton Oiler organization. And there is his production in two games. You can't ask for anything more, but when the fans watch him tonight, key on him when he has the puck in the offensive zone. Very good stick handling, very good creating plays, and around the net, he knows what to do. The bottom line, putting the puck in the net, he can do it. A bona fide National Hockey League prospect. That's what the North Stars are looking for. In the process, it could help the Springfield Indians. Okay, and those two players, of course, will be in action this evening as the Indians take on the Fredericton Express. Both clubs have made their appearance on the ice, and momentarily we'll have play-by-play -play for you, the Indians and the Fredericton Express. John, the fans will not see Kerry Taco in the net tonight. They'll see Mike Sands although Taco came up with one of the tremendous efforts of the year on Thursday night. Boy, what a performance that was. As you know, Mike, 44 shots taken at him by the Adirondack Red Wings. Taco stopped 40 of them, but many of them in crucial situations, especially when Adirondack was throwing caution to the wind, coming at the Indians like there was no tomorrow. Taco was there to make the stops when he had to in some fine fashion. He's been playing quite well for Springfield. We saw a week ago Mike Sands rebound off an injury and have a good effort. It gives the Indians two quality goaltenders, no matter who it is, Sands or Taco, the tribe's pretty safe in the goal. Indians are going to face tonight a guy by the name of Frank Caprice, who's been up with the National Hockey League Vancouver Canucks, and he'll be the starting netminder here this evening as they have a brief ceremony on the ice right now at center ice. And we have a bit of a delay as they're working on things in the neutral zone. And John, uh, we were talking about Frank Caprice, the netminder. Wendell Young up with the parent Vancouver Canucks, and they've had some goaltending changes here. They certainly have. We saw Luke Gannett, a youngster from the Quebec organization last week, really did not have much help defensively and was let down by his defense and thus the product was a 6-1 victory for Springfield. He will not play tonight. Wendell Young at 24 games under his belt was playing well for Fredericton when recalled by Vancouver Caprice 
you'll tell the fans and let them know the kind of veteran he is. He's been around with the Vancouver Canucks, seen his day in the National Hockey League, still might. And he's going to be a formidable opponent for the Indians to try to beat here tonight. Okay, as they continue the activities on the ice, as the Indians getting ready to take on the Fredericton Express, currently Springfield in third place in the American Hockey League Southern Division with a mark of 16 wins, 13 losses, and three ties. As you see, Captain uh, Chris Pryor of the Springfield Indians accepting a plaque and bringing it over to the Springfield Indians players bench. And of course, the Indians in third place, and they're taking on Fredericton here. Now let's pause for the playing of our national anthems here at the Springfield Civic Center. Dan Singer, Francis Smith, and organist Dan Marujak here at the Springfield Civic Center. It's the Indians against the Fredericton Express. The Indians third place in the American Hockey League Southern Division at 16, 13, and 3. The starting lineups tonight for the Indians in the Nets will be Mike Sands. On the season, as you see on your screen, seven games, three and three, a 4.35 goals against average. Greg Levy and Ken Leiter on defense. The forward line, Bob Basson for Springfield, along with Alan Kerr, and also for the Indians, Terry Martin. Meanwhile, Fredericton will have Frank Caprice in the nets. On defense, Dale Dunbar and Dan Poudrier. The forward line, a rookie line of Dunk McIntyre, Scott Tuttle, and Ken Quinney, and they force a face-off immediately in the neutral zone. The referee this evening is Mark Fawcett. The linesman, Bill Morrissey, and Joe Calcazola. Well, this being the fourth meeting of the year that these two clubs have gotten together, twice up in Fredericton with the Indians splitting two with the Fredericton Express, and then last week here on Continental Cablevision, you fans saw the Springfield Indians pick up a 6-1 victory over these Express, and it won't be until the month of March, March 1st, here in Springfield, the next time these two clubs get together. Here is Dan Poudry on defense for Fredericton. Lead pass on left wing is Huff closing through. Right in on goal, shoots, Sands the save, gets his own rebound. 
And then Sands, I believe, was able to get a piece of that, and the rebound goes right to Ken Leiter, who's able to bank one on left wing for Terry Martin in the neutral zone. Feeds for Craig Levy. Lead left wing pass for Alan Kerr into the far corner. Kerr is skated off with the Fredericton defense. Loose to the near side. Indian center for Lovey. Shoots and he shot it high and wide. Rebound bounces right in front of the goal and batted away by Caprice. And the rebound taken and knocked down by the Express. Here they move into the Springfield zone as they end up having to circle back Dale Dunbar as the outlets on the far side for Mike Huff who dumps it through. Dangerous scoring chance for the Indians as they were almost able to put one through and almost Caprice was able to uh, almost knocked it in his own net. Now play to center ice pass for Roger Kortko with two line offside is the call. Oh, a close call for the Springfield Indians as Greg Levy had an excellent scoring chance coming in and pinching in from his right point position. There you see Levy in the foreground shaking his head there as he goes to the Springfield Indians bench. And he had a golden chance, just shot it high of the netminder Caprice. And then the rebound came off the backboards high into the air. Nonchalantly, Caprice batted it out of harm's way. Looked like he wasn't even whatsoever thwarted or really bothered by that chance as for when he batted the puck out of the air. But it was still a great chance for Springfield. Now Andy Schliebener clears ahead. Intercepted by Kortko. Lead backhand pass on the far side for Henry. Back to Neil Coulter. Tipped off of his stick right to Kortko in the slot area. Feeds it to the far side for Dale Henry. He's fought off the puck by Andy Schliebener. Big jam up over there. Indians try and center one. And finally, the puck is frozen under Gary Lupul and will have a face off in the Fredericton zone. Injury rolls in the Springfield Indians continue with the same players being out of the lineup once again here this evening. Defenseman Dave Jensen still out with that knee problem. Vern Smith, the back could be somewhat of a problem. Vern Smith has missed five games now and looks like he might be out for a couple of more weeks. He is still out of the lineup. Of course, Jim Archibald will be out for an extended period of time with a broken arm. Right wing Ed Lee still bothered by the hip. He's at home in Providence, and he is also out of the lineup here tonight. In addition, Scott Housen, a late scratch. The ankle problem, which Housen tried to come back on, is kicked up on him. He is not suited up for tonight's action. Face-off will be in the circle to the right of the Fredericton goal. No score. We played a minute and 40 seconds into this first frame. Mad scramble near side, picked up by Fredericton. They clear one all the way into the Springfield zone, and back after it is Glenn Johannesson. In the forecheck is Jean-Marc Golin on the far side, but Springfield's Dale Henry tips it back into his own end of the rink. We're scoreless here in this first period as the Indians' Bill Stewart takes over and then leads an attack on left wing, but we're going to have a penalty back of the play, a hooking call, our first infraction of the night, and I believe it's going to be against the Indians. Well, Glenn Johannesson gets the gate here for hooking as the play was in. Going around in the Springfield end, Johannesson trying to catch up with Taylor Hall. There's 15 Hall, the youngster, skating and chasing Bill Stewart, who has the puck for Springfield. And then as the play works itself around, Johannesson with the stick hauling down two express players right there on your screen. He gets the call with 17.54 remaining first period. We're just underway, no score. And Glenn Johannesson is off for looking. Okay, face off will be in the Springfield zone. It'll be Elaine Lemieux, a former Springfield Indian, flanked by Tony Curry, and also for the Express, it'll be the captain of Fredericton, and that is Mike Huff. And play going all the way back into the Springfield, into the uh, Fredericton zone, and back after it is Tom Thornberry. Here is Thornberry, the former Baltimore skipjack. Angles his way to center and slaps it off the boards into the Springfield zone. Out of the net stands to leave it for Pryor. He is able to clear it outside the line, and the Express have to go back. In their own zone is Tom Thornberry on the near side. Takes control and then feeds one for Elaine Lemieux. He can score, as you fans know. Shoots one through into the Springfield zone. Sands just sets it up for his own defense, and the Indians are able to clear one outside the line. And picking up the loose puck in the neutral zone is Terry Tate. Tate drops it for Paul Houck. Houck circling and angling in front for Tate, but that pass tipped off by Tony Curry, who sends Mike Huff on his way down the left wing board. Huff trying to move through, but Pryor stays with him. Then Huff curls up on the near side to make a play. Feeds one back for Tony Curry to Huff on the near board. Back for Curry. Shoots one through in front, but Pryor to his knees to block it. And the Indians are able to clear one all the way down, and the Express have to go back. Good defensive play in the Springfield zone. Leiter going down there along with Pryor to block that shot as Lemieux was open at the corner of the goal. Curry trying to set him up, but a fine defensive play. Now the Express come to center. The rookie Tom Corrales 
shoots one of the Springfield line, but the Express have to go back after Springfield had tipped it to the Fredericton line. Now on right wing in a four check is Ken Quinney. Winds it for the youngster Dunk McIntyre. Poked off of his stick and the Indians are able to clear one on the left wing side to center. Basson can't catch up to it and Fredericton's Corrales able to lead up to center right. Here come the Express McIntyre. Dropped for Quinney a shot. His shot caroms off the backboard. Then Scott Tottle tries to give for Quinney. Intercepted there, the Indians are able to clear one, but not out. Fredericton's Quinney spins back behind the net. Angle is his way as the Indians' Johannesson is back on. It's centered. Tottle is shot from the slot area, but intercepted there, and Springfield's Johannesson comes to center. Moves into the Fredericton zone, but trapped in ahead on the near boards, Alan Kerr, offside. Well, the Indians do the job and kill off the Fredericton power play, which potentially looks like a great unit they throw out there with Huff and Lemieux and Curry up front and players like Thornberry and Bellin on the points. Looks like they could really throw some shots at the Springfield goal, but did not in that power play opportunity. The Indians do a pretty good job killing it off, and we're going to have to see if we're going to have any physical play here early at the tail end of last week's game. Fredericton and Springfield got into it on a couple of occasions. Mike Stevens for Fredericton, Dale Henry for Springfield. If we're going to see any of it, it might be here in the first period. Okay, the Express take over in their own zone and lead up the left side and into the center ice area comes Gary Lupel. Lupel moving in. Feeds one through on the near side. David Bruce circling to make a play. Here is Bruce on the near boards. It's the Express looking to take an early lead, but Indian Servinas able to clear one into the neutral zone. Here is Dan Poudrier. Sends up the right side as the Express moving through into the Springfield zone. Here's Bruce centers in front of the net. Quick shot by Lupul, and that deflects wide, and here comes Servinas back for Springfield. He's checked on the play by Bruce, and after the four check is Gary Lupul as they try and work it free on the far side for Mike Stevens, who's also in there, and finally it's frozen on the far boards. We've played five minutes and six seconds into this first period, no score. Well, as you look at George Servinas, Mike, a little bit sluggish here at the start. I think both clubs suffering the effects of the night before on Thursday night, Fredericton at home in the Maritime Provinces to Moncton, a long travel day to end up in Springfield on Friday. The Indians had just a knockdown drag out battle with the Adirondack Red Wings, and even though it might be just two and a half hours away, still the tribe here early might be feeling the effects of that game. And so often the case here in the American Hockey League, travel plays a big part of the performance on the ice. And both clubs picked up Thursday night victories, and of course, uh, very big victories for both clubs. Planned away, and the Indians take control. Lead pass on left wing, but the Express, Jan Marco Nat tips to the Indians line and then just shoots one through into the Springfield end of the rink. Now Bill Stewart leads a three-man rush to center. Shoots one through in after Dale Henry. Henry, a sharp angle shot, deflected away at the Express goal by Caprice. On the near side, Frederick can trying to clear out, but it's fought for and finally drawn for Roger Kortko. Spun around by Schliebener in front for Dale Henry. Henry for Springfield, drops it to the right point for Stewart, a shot, and a skate saved by Caprice. Jammed up in the near corner to the left of the Fredericton goal. It's fought four and finally frozen there on the near boards with a couple of Indians, and there you see right up front, former Springfield Indian, Elaine Lemieux. Elaine Lemieux, very gifted offensive performer, and Lemieux this season in 25 games with Fredericton has 14 goals, 13 assists, 27 points, and he has come down from the Quebec Nordiques, and continues to put the offensive numbers on the scoreboard. And many thought Mike, when he was dealt to Quebec, that would be his home. And he was cut out for that wide open style of play. But still, Michelle Bergeron, the coach of Quebec, still maintains that defense is part of the game and knows that forwards have to help out. He wasn't doing his job, but offensively, he's definitely contributing here in Fredericton, trying to work his way back. There was also some talk that he was going to join his brother, Mario Lemieux, in Pittsburgh, but that never panned out. Big fight for the loose puck back behind the net as the Indians' Paul Houck takes control. He's checked on the play as it's jammed up on the near side and finally Tate for Springfield. Jammed up by Dale Dunbar out of Winthrop, Massachusetts. Feeds now for Houck but broken up at the express defense. It's cleared all the way down into the Springfield zone. Lighter going back after it as he touches it. Icing is called. And a very young Fredericton defense out here with Dale Dunbar a youngster, an American, and then you have your French-Canadian in Dan Poudrier.
flanking the back line for the Express. Well, definitely two sides of culture there with Poudrier and Dunbar, the players on defense. And with a young defense, as you know, Mike, sometimes what can happen is they're either going to play extremely great or they're going to make the costly errors. And last week we saw the Fredericton Club, coached by Andre Savard, who always has defense on his mind, although he's opened up the game a little bit, unlike Earl Jessamine, who was very, very defensive-minded. But here, what happened last week was a young defensive core for Fredericton let Gunnett in goal down a couple of times, and it hurt them on a few occasions. As a matter of fact, six times the Indians picking up six goals in that hockey game. Here tonight, I'm sure they're trying to tighten things up against Springfield. Here's Ron Handy, who has 15 goals on the season, to take the draw against Fredericton's Gary Lupel. Play and fought four, and finally, Levy has it right point. His wrister is blocked, but Hauk for Springfield bats at it. Finally, it's cleared into the center ice area and flagged down at the Indians' defense. Here is Springfield's Ron Handy. Lead pass for Paul Hauk, who just clears it off the boards into the Fredericton zone, and Capri sets it up for his own defense. Express try and clear out. They do to center, and here's Gary Lupul into the Springfield zone. Crosses the blue line, pulls up at the far side. Gets it back for Schliebener, cuts in, shoots, right on. Sands is able to cover up and make the stop, and he squeezes that puck between his pads. Andy Schliebener let go of the shot. Sands got a good look at it, and then maintain control of the puck. We're going to see it on replay right here. This is Huff carrying the puck for Fredericton, and he's going to set up the player coming in on the near side right here. Andy Schliebener up from his defense position. Let's go, a good shot from the top of the circle. Sands there with pad control, making the save and maintaining control of the rebound, letting his defense do the job of clearing the way in front. This is only Mike Sands' second game since November 8th. Of course, he beat the Express on uh, the weekend last week, as you saw on Continental Cable Vision. That was only his first game. He hasn't played since then, so only twice he's made appearances since November 8th, since that uh, knee injury flared up. Face off just outside of the blue line to the right of the Indians goal. It'll be a uh, new face off performer. It'll be Terry Martin to draw for the Indians against the Express player, and that is Mark Curtin. Drawn back by Curtin all the way into his own zone, and Poudrier takes over. Eyes the traffic in front, but then loses control of the puck and finally does uh, clear it all the way into the Springfield zone. Here is Captain Chris Pryor for the Indians. Tries to clear, but held in by Fredericton. Drop back to the point for Poudrier. Shot, stick save by Sands, and it deflects up high over the glass in the crowd. 12.42 remaining and no score here tonight in Springfield between the Fredericton Express and the Springfield Indians. And that fan is eagerly awaiting our Tribe Trivia, I'm sure, which is due on the screen very shortly. Yet another question with a chance for you fans to go back in Indians history and try to come up with the answer. The answer given in the third period of play. So when we get there in our next break here and we get an opportunity, we'll have Tribe Trivia. Okay, it'll be Mark Curtin again to draw for the Express. He tries to lead it back for Curry, but bear hug there by Kerr. Now to the point, Poudrier tries to shoot one through. Big scramble on the near boards, and finally it's jammed back behind the net. Sands winds it through on the far side, but Dunbar pinches in. Feeds for Huff into the far side. Centers in front. Curtin a shot. That is blocked, and here come the Indians on a three-man rush. Kerr leads to center off the skate of Martin, and then on the near side, Huff for Fredericton, able to tip to the Springfield line. We're scoreless here in this first period. 12 minutes, 11 seconds left in this first frame. And on the left wing boards, Martin closing and shoots right on. Caprice to say. Mad scramble far side. Curtain for the Express, the veteran, able to tip one up the center ice where Huff can't control it. And then the Indians are able to break back. In across the line, Johannesson, but they rule Kerr was ahead of the play on the left wing side, offside. Well, if we have our trivia, let's see it. Tonight's question, there it is. What former Indians player and coach is a co-holder of the American Hockey League record for the most penalty shots scored in one season? What former Indians player and coach is a co-holder of the American Hockey League record for the most penalty shots scored in one season? Okay, uh, I'm sure my record will continue on that question as the play comes to center ice, and Lacey for Springfield just tips it through into the express zone. And Neil Bellin, who has consistently in his American Hockey League day shown a lot of offense, checking the play. Indians. Servinas tries to wheel one in front, but blocked off there, and the Express to come to center. Here's Dunk McIntyre trying to close through, but he's met and squeezed off the puck by Ken Leiter, and then Neil Bellin recovers and shoots to center ice. Now it's fought for on the near boards, and Bellin to center ice. Moving through across the line for Scott Tunnel 
and it's offside. This they call the Smurf line for the Express. McIntyre, Quinney, and Tuttle, a bunch of uh, uh, Mark Pavlich type players for the Express on this line. And all three of them rookies and near the race as far as they're concerned in rookie scoring. Tuttle's been up there along with Quinney and McIntyre has shown some profit very much promise here in Fredericton, this line right here. Three youngsters on their way up and showing an awful lot of promise. Play on the near side and Bill Stewart tips one into the center ice area. Hapshide is able to give for Gary Lacey. Here is Gary Lacey for Springfield. Kind of a quiet performer, but doing the job this year offensively. Tipped off at the express defense and then Stewart for the Indians. Clears, but knocked in by McIntyre offside at the Springfield line. A lot of loose play between the blue lines. Very much so. Very sluggish play with a lot of missed passing plays, and the timing seems to be just a little bit off. Both clubs not skating which much, with much zip whatsoever here in the first period of play. No score, as you see your screen, with 10.55 remaining here in the first period. And it might take that first goal or that first vicious hit in this hockey game or a little altercation to get something going, but it seems like both clubs right now are playing each other's to sleep. Here is Neil Coulter, long shot. That caroms off the backboards right under the mesh behind Frank Caprice. And we'll have a face-off in the Fredericton zone. You know Caprice, a very interesting story. And the fact that he played about three years ago with Vancouver and compiled 9.00 goals against average, didn't have much of a chance up there. And then has come down and played some here in Fredericton, some up in the Vancouver organization. And he's never really gotten that, uh, that real big chance. And this year, of course, with the Canucks giving up so many goals, it's it's been difficult for Caprice to maintain that good goals against average. He doesn't have much in front. Play comes to center ice and the loose puck knocked down. It's Craig Levy able to tip one. Lemieux shoots it through into the center ice area on the right wing side. Breaking through is Jean-Marc Golin. Centers one through the slot area, but it caroms off the near boards up to center ice. Now the Indians take control. Leading it through is Henry, but again, an offside is called at the express blue line. Well, those are the type of plays when you're skating well, click at the blue line, and when you're not, and you just seem to be that little bit of a stride off, they don't. In that time, Roger Corco just a stride over the blue line with Dale Henry carrying the puck and Corco trying to look for an opening and heading for the net just a stride off. But the Indians looking to get their legs soon with plenty of time left. No score coming up on the 10-minute mark of the first period. Here's play into the center ice area, and the Indians' Chris Pryor tips it off the boards, but knocked down there. And Jean-Marc Collin takes over. Leads it through for Elaine Lemieux. Here comes Lemieux, twisting and turning into the Springfield zone, but Taylor Hall out of Regina, Saskatchewan, offside. Now we have some pushing and shoving, and it's Taylor Hall jamming up with Springfield's player on the near side. And I believe that is the Indians' Neil Coulter, as you see on your screen. They're wrestling with each other. Now Coulter able to get a punch through. They're both trying to land some punches, and now they both connect on a couple. Coulter lands a couple of rights and lefts and finally gets on top of Taylor Hall, the youngster who played for Regina of the Western Hockey League of the Vancouver Canucks organization. Well, not a surprise. Both teams trying to get themselves started, and this might be what might do it, although not probably a knockdown, dragout battle between Hall and Coulter. Still a little bit of emotion shown on the part of both players, Coulter and Hall both. Hall and Coulter not known for this type of activity. Coulter and Hall are both Good size and got involved there with a lot of jostling back and forth. Taylor Hall last season, you take a look at him, was injured for most of the year, played just 12 games with Vancouver, injured his knee, and he was a highly sought after prospect out of junior playing for Regina in the Western Hockey League where he scored 142 points in his final junior season. And then last season after 12 games with Vancouver, just hurt, injured his right knee very severely, required surgery and missed the remaining part of the season. But this year trying to get himself back on the right track. I guess they're going to give an additional minor penalty to Taylor Hall. So it's going to be a power play opportunity for the Indians if what stands right now is going to be the call by John Pelliquin. So the Indians will have their first power play chance of the evening. And let's see uh, what that's all about. Well, Hall obviously was the instigator in this situation. He's going to get the initial penalty for slashing. He obviously was behind the puck, and we did not get an opportunity to see how the altercation started. But Hall must have taken a slash to the body of Neil Coulter. He took immediate offense at that, and then they went at it. So the advantage now will go to Springfield as you take a look at the Indian success on the power. The Indians have been doing very, very well recently with the men. And here they come on the attack once more. 
Ron Handy cruising through into the far side. Gets it for Paul Houck. Houck feathers a pass over to Handy. Back to the point is Ken Leiter for Springfield. Eyes the traffic. Beads for Handy to the right point for Levy. Closing in. Shoots. Save Caprice. Then the rebound deflects wide. And Mike Huff able to clear one out to center ice. And here comes Mark Curtin with one man back into the Springfield zone. Tries to move around Levy, gets the shot off, but Sands is able to turn that aside. And here it comes, handy to center. Lead pass across the line for Hauk, who deflects it in. In effort, not a four check, is the Indians player, Terry Tate, back for Hauk, but Bellin breaks that up. Indians in a four check. Handy and Bellin fight for it far side. Indians Hauk trying to make a play as it's intercepted there, and here comes Curtin back for the express with just a minute remaining in the minor penalty to Taylor Hall. 8.48 left first period. We have a scoreless hockey game at this point. Now the Indians, Gary Lacey on this power play. Poke check by McIntyre, who leaves it for his own defense, and Fredericton's Gary Lupel banks it off the boards. All the way down, the Indians have to go back. Now the Express dump it right back into the corner where Bill Stewart for Springfield. Neat backhand pass to center, and here come the Indians up the neutral zone. Lacey tries to make a play, but Lupul sweeps it away into the neutral zone. Now Springfield on the attack once more as Cowdice for the Tribe, dumping it through. Express try and clear out. Cowdice at the right point, holds it in. Feeds for Lacey. To Servina, centers one. Back to the left point for Stewart. For Shaw, half shot now. Mark half shot. Trying to make a play as he drops it to the point for Stewart. Three seconds left in the penalty. Cowdice is shot right on. And save Caprice and the Express are at even strength at this point as Corrales, who is serving the penalty, is right back on. Now into the far side. Springfield's Bill Stewart banks it off the boards for George Servinus. Lead pass to center. Here comes Hafshide moving through. Pulls up at the blue line. Slides one for Servinus. Servinus trying to make a play, but poke checked by Curry, who clears into the center ice area. Seven minutes, 27 seconds. Left first period. Neither team have a goal this evening. Now it's knocked all the way into the Springfield end of the rink. And Sands leaves it for Glenn Johannesson. Here is Johannesson out of North Battleford, Saskatchewan. Lead pass to center. In across the line is Springfield's Terry Martin as he twists and turns. Spinning one in front, but broken up at the express defense. And the express are able to clear one into the center ice area. Here's McIntyre. Lead pass for Quinney. But the whole play whistled on offside at the Springfield Blue Line. Under seven minutes to go in this first period, no score. Well, the penalty expires. The Indians do not get too many chances on the man advantage, but the one they did at the tail end of the power play chance, Jim Cowdice with a slap shot from the point. And unfortunately for Springfield, Gary Lacey was cruising through the slot and just fanned on the rebound that came right back out in front. Otherwise, it would have been just a golden opportunity. But you can really count the good scoring chances in this hockey game on one hand for both clubs because they've been Few and far between, 6.58 remaining first period and no score. Now play to center ice and Chris Pryor for the try. Scoops one through into the Fredericton zone and races after it himself. Circling behind the net as he tries to center one, then holds on to that puck, dumps it through, but Poudrier intercepts that and banks it off the boards to center. Now Johannesson on the left wing side for Bob Bassett. Bassett is checked on the play in the center ice area. McIntyre trying to move it through, but intercepted there by Pryor. Leads Bassin on left wing. Tries to squeeze through the express defense, but Frederick did knock it to center, and the Indians knock it right back. Continuous play from blue line to blue line. Not much action in either offensive zone. And Scott Tottle, lead pass to center. Moving through on the far side, Ken Quinney just deflects it in. And the express change on the fly as the Indians on the attack. Johannesson tips it ahead for Terry Martin. Broken up there, and now Martin back into the Fredericton zone. Tries to... Speed his way through, but poked off the puck, and the Express come to center. Here is David Bruce moving through into the Springfield zone. Bruce trying to drop one through. It is dropped back. Here's a shot by Bellin right on, and intercepted by Leiter. Rebound in front, and Sands gets a piece of the shot in front. Now a shot from the left point by Schliebener is blocked. Schliebener clears to the point, but broken up there, and a three-on-two for Springfield. Dale Hunter with Alan Kerr. The pass for Kerr shoots, and he missed the net. Here is Kortko trying to set it one. He's up in it. Now back behind the net, Kortko. Set it for Kerr in front. The priest kicks it aside. Now it's loose, and now we have some pushing and shoving. On the near side, Dale Henry and a Fredericton player on the near boards. And I believe for Fredericton, it's Stevens. And let's see what happens. 
happens there is they're wrestling with each other. Those two had gotten together in the last meeting between these two clubs. Both are trying to get them with, uh, through uh, the linesman Morrissey and Cal Pizzola, who are holding them in the corner. You know, we mentioned earlier that this one could carry over, you know, seven days, not too long as far as this is concerned, and grudges will carry over when two clubs get together. And Mike Stevens and Dale Henry, we probably have not seen the end of this one tonight as they jostled in the corner as the play was buzzing in that Fredericton zone. Roger Corco hauled down from behind, and the fans wanted to call on Bellin as Corco was had moved into position in the slot to try and get a chance. He did not have possession of the puck, and he right now is talking to Mark Fawcett very easily. It could have been an interference call on that play and put the Indians on the power play. Corco still with a few words. We're going to see it right here. As you see the play come, that was the shot of Alan Kurz that went wide and high. And here you see Corco. He didn't have control of that puck. He didn't even touch it with his stick. And it was all down from behind. It was not Miller, but Schliebener that did it. It was the culprit and could have gotten the penalty right there for Fredericton. But no call by Fawcett. And just Majors are giving it both Mike Stevens of Fredericton and Henry Five minutes each for fighting. And the play goes on here in the first period as you look at Indians coach Fred Crick with 5.26 remaining here in the first period. And we have no score. For Stevens, as far as his majors against Springfield this season, he, of course, involved in two and also a little grudge match with Henry last game. And the Express and the Indians already this year have been involved in eight altercations as far as the major penalties are concerned. Actually, that's nine now. 18 majors have been called between the two clubs so far in 1985-86. This, of course, the fifth meeting between the two clubs. Now it's jammed up and the loose puck taken. Uh, fourth meeting between these two clubs as the Express are able to clear one on the boards into the Springfield zone. Pryor takes over. Pryor trying to clear out. Express Lupel trying to center one through, but intercepted there. And here come the Indians back. Paul Houck lead pass to center, but broken up at the express line as it's fought for in the center ice area. And Bill Stewart takes over for the Indians. Taps it ahead for Ron Handy. Lead pass on left wing. Tate shoots one. A bullet-like shot that Caprice gets a piece of, and it deflects over the glass into the crowd. Well, a good shot taken right there. If we get a chance to see it once again, you're going to see one player on the Springfield Indians team, and we've mentioned it, and it seems more and more with each game for the Tribe that this man gets more scoring chances on this type of play. He scored one last week in the same fashion. That's Terry Tate with a big slap shot. He let it go. Caprice was out the top of the goal. Caprice to take away the angle, but last week against Luke Burnett in the Fredericton goal, Tate scored a goal just like that in fine fashion that gave the Indians even more insurance in route to victory. 4.51 remaining first period. No score. He also did it on Sunday night in New Haven in a 4-4 deadlock. Now play to the point. Stewart a shot. That's off a stick and loose in front, finally picked up by Fredericton. And here comes Tony Curry to center. Lead pass on the far side as the Express trying to work through. Here's Curry on the far boards, tries to center, but intercepted there, and here come the Indians back. Lead pass for Houck on the left side for Stewart. Stewart pulls up between the circle, shoots one. Oh, and he blasts it wide. Karam's off the backboards all the way to center, where Leiter fights off with Curry. Now Stewart in his own zone, just shoots one through into the Fredericton end of the rink. And back after for the Express is Dale Dunbar. The rookie clears one into the center ice area. Indians knock one back for Gary Lacey, who leads it for his own defense. Now Leiter tips it ahead on left wing. Servina's trying to break through. He's upended. And a penalty coming up against Fredericton. As back to touch of Hoffman, as, as he does, the second power play chance for the Indians. Well, we're going to get the penalty right here. Fredericton will be a man short as Dale Dunbar is going to get the call for tripping George Servinus, as you see it from ice level, trying to work his way into the Fredericton zone. Dunbar, the youngster on defense right there as Servinus was trying to hop over the stick of the Fredericton defenseman. He was upended. And in the process, Dunbar gets two minutes for tripping with 3.59 remaining in the first period. So the Indians now with a chance to pick up the first goal of this hockey game and going on the power play. Okay, the Indians failed to score in their first chance this evening. This is their second opportunity. As we mentioned, Dunbar for tripping at 16.01. Indians have Gary Lacey along with Mark Havscheid and George Servinus as the Troika up front. Here are the Express clearing one all the way into the Springfield zone. And out of the net, Sands to clear one on the near side for Mark Kampfschein. Kampfschein, who has five, game, uh, five points in his first two Indians games. Cruising through across the line. There is one, but it's deflected up high over the glass and into the crowd. 
Mark Hapshack, great acceleration as you see him coming through the zone right there, leading the rush on the power play. With a minute 43 remaining in this power play opportunity, here is Hapshide. Watch the acceleration as soon as he sees some open ice. Doesn't take long for him to get much speed up, much in the fashion of Gord Shervin, and of course a goal scorer in the fashion of Don Biggs. But what Minnesota likes about Hapshide is the size. It's 6 to 185, bigger than those two players, which makes him even better of a prospect. Now play fought for and jammed up and cleared over the glass into the crowd. So we'll have another faceoff in a minute 34 remaining. John, what's it going to take for the Indians to get rolling here against the Express? Maybe just one goal to get them moving? Sometimes that's all it needs, Mike, is just to get the Indians in motion, is to get that one goal and get the snowball going in their own favor. But here tonight, both clubs a little bit listless at the start and through the first period of play. Not too many scoring chances, but I'm sure Springfield seems to be skating with a little more zip now and getting their legs back. And here at home, they have to have the incentive. So I don't think it's going to be long before the Indians get on the board. Now play back into the Springfield zone where Craig Levy takes control. Here is Levy leading a rush on left wing and hands for Ken Leiter. Shoots one through into the express zone. And Karam's right in front. Caprice almost lost it as it bounced in the crease. Now Levy closing through. But poke checked and swept away by the express Mark Curtin. And the Indians have to go back. Just over a minute remaining in the Fredericton penalty to Dale Dunbar. 2.57 left in this first period. As Craig Levy on the attack. Moving through into the Fredericton zone. Drops for Kerr. Kerr centers one but blocked by Poudrier. Left point lighter to the right point for Levy. Levy between the circles for Kerr. Kerr trying to make a play. Centers in front. Hapshad backhands it wide. Zervinas on the far side tries to make a play. But it ends up deflecting over the glass into the crowd. And had Hapshad seen that puck coming a little bit earlier, he may have been able to put it on the net. But where this entire play starts right here is from the points. Both Leiter and Levy, very important to spring for the Indians' fortune on the power play. There you see Alan Kerr picking up the pass from Levy, and he's going to try and work a play as he had trouble with it in his skates. It's going to go back to Leiter. Leiter slides it over to Levy, and both of these players very gifted at the points. Now Kerr in the middle looking for that better shot in close has trouble getting a handle on it, and you're going to see it eventually squirt over to Hapshide, who just fired it wide. He was right on the spot. A good chance for the Indians to pick up a goal. K236 left first period. No score, and the Express clear one down with 34 seconds left in the Dunbar penalty. Indians have Cowdice along with Stewart on the back line as the Indians look to move and score a goal to take the lead. Here they come on the attack to center ice. Moving to the neutral zone is Bob Bassett. Bassin twists and turns as he crosses the line. Met at the express defense and then Kerr takes over. In the far corner, drops to the left point as the Indians wheel and deal with the man advantage. Here is Springfield's Jim Cowdice, right point, shoots deflected, that goes wide. On the far side, Terry Martin for the Indians. Tries to squeeze through, the express are able to clear one. All the way down and the Indians have to go back. That's gonna do it on the penalty. Dunbar is back on and the team's at even strength with under two minutes remaining in this first frame. Up to center ice, the Indians, Bob Bassin trying to break through, but blocked off at the Fredericton defense. And Taylor Hall leads one through on the near boards for Jean-Marc Golin. Centers one, but right onto the stick of Springfield's Alan Kerr. He's tripped up, and we're going to have a penalty on the play, and it's going to be against the Express, John. But And I know normally we question if it's against the Indians, uh, uh, but here you don't know if really... That one shouldn't have been called against Fredericton. Well, I'd like to see this one again. We're going to get the opportunity as Fredericton will be a man short for tripping right here. Alan Kerr is going to be the man picking up the puck right there for Springfield, intercepting it, and then getting it going back the other way. Watch the stick right here as Kerr is upended on the play. John Mark Golan gets the penalty. He got the stick in there, and Kerr went down with a flamboyant fashion that might think that he might have taken a dive, but I think the stick was there, and a a justified call, although Fredericton very, very unhappy. They're feeling that they're getting the short end of the stick. What you look for here is the referee's consistency, and referees like to even things out as far as penalties are concerned, and Fredericton just, just got done killing off an Indian power play, and now they have yet another, and in the process have picked up an additional minor, and I believe it's going to be a bench minor for unsportsmanlike conduct. No player number is opposite the two minutes on the scoreboard, which usually means it is a bench penalty. Nonetheless, this will put the Indians in even a better position 
with a two-man advantage, a minute 32 remaining, remaining here in the first period. Neither team has scored in this hockey game, and up until recent moments, neither club has had too many clear-cut scoring chances. The Indians, I would say, have had the bulk of those here late in the first period, but now have an excellent opportunity. Andre Savard, normally a mild-mannered type of individual, but here voicing his concerns over that call by Mark Fawcett. So a two-man advantage for Springfield here, and the Indians here late in the first frame have a chance to take the lead. Here's Craig Levy, slides one for Roger Kortko. Pass across the line for Mark Hafshide, who shoots it through. Express try and clear out. Indians into forecheck. Here's Kortko, sent it for Levy. Levy leads it to the top of the circle as the Indians take over. Here's Levy, drops it to the left point for Leiter. Leiter feeds it through. Now it's dropped to the point for Levy, shoots, and that deflects wide. On the far side, Hafshide for Springfield. Gives it for Levy. Less than a minute to go in the period as the Indians Coulter drops it back. Leiter unable to hold it in and they rule it was offside at the express blue line. Although it appeared that Springfield had held it in. Well, very, very close at the blue line. Greg Levy trying to keep it in. Good job by Kenny Leiter, a great effort. The pass from Coulter was astray. Watch it right here as the play unfolds. Leiter's going to get the pass from Neil Coulter, 33, as the Indians very patient, looking for the better scoring chance than just blasting the puck from the point. And the pass from Coulter just a little bit away from Leiter. Leiter going down to try and keep the puck in, and then the puck came outside the line just a hair and was whistled down for the offside. Plenty of time still, a minute 17, but just 48 seconds remaining in the first period. Okay, that's the story as the puck is dropped and Springfield's Levy feeds it on the left side for Ken Leiter. Leiter pulling up on the far side, drops it back to the point. Indians try and move through. Pass to the far side as Springfield's half shot. Gives for Kortko. Kortko a shot right on and the stop made by Caprice at the side of the net half shot. Circling in front, back to Levy. To the left side, Leiter shoots right on and the stop made by Caprice as the Indians throwing that puck around beautifully, but with that express triangle defense, they're doing a good job of keeping the Indians on the perimeter. Well, the Indians, that's exactly it. The Indians cannot work themselves in. Here you see Habscheid was looking for the good chance, but was forced to give it back to the point. Levy and Leiter play catch with it, and then Caprice does a good job controlling the rebound. The shot from Leiter hits him in the midsection. Coulter was right there looking for that rebound. If Caprice had juggled it, any bit whatsoever. Coulter would have hopped out it, I'm sure, and had a great chance to put the puck in the net. 23 seconds remaining in this first period. The Indians still, although putting some pressure on recently, looking for their first goal. Okay, face off to the Fredericton zone as Stewart holds it and shoots. What a glove save by Caprice. And Stewart let a wrist shot go from the point, and Caprice, although there was traffic in front, saw it coming and was able to make a glove save. Bill Stewart, who's been sparkling offensively of late for Springfield with a wrist shot right there, plenty of steam on it. Puck comes back to the point. Instead of going with a big wind up in the slap shot that could get blocked, the quick release of Stewart with the wrist shot and a good chance. Now Stewart again for Springfield. Neat backhand pass for a handy. His pass is picked off by Curtin, who shoots it down. That's just about going to do it for the period with just six seconds remaining. Here's Stewart for the try. Leads a rush to center, two seconds remaining. Leads it on the left wing boards. Quick shot by Handy, deflects and caroms off the backboards. Wide of the net and the buzzer sound signaling the end of the first period. And each team, uh, neither team actually, getting uh, the bulk of the scoring opportunities. The Indians maybe a little bit more so, but still neither team able to put a home a marker. Well, thanks to the power plays, the Indians did get more chances late in the period, but neither club really putting out much output offensively throughout the first portions of this first period of play. Both clubs skated with not much zip and had a little bit of a problem getting going. Then it worked itself out, and in the first period, late in the period, the Indians picked it up just a hair, but they're gonna need an awful lot more as this game unfolds. But as we end one, no score, Fredericton and Springfield. Okay, that's the story here. We'll be back with more in just a moment.
Candidus pigmentosa, RP, is a puzzle. It's a hereditary eye disease that causes blindness, mainly in children and young adults. We're searching for the cause of RP and a way to treat and prevent it. Stopping RP takes research and education. And that's the purpose of the RP Foundation Fighting Blindness. Please help us. Because fighting RP isn't a game. It's saving a child's sight. Call toll-free 1-800-638-2300. Welcome back, everyone. Mike Burick alongside John Forslund. And, John, kind of a slow-paced first period, no scoring on the board. Well, the way it started, I think, Mike, both clubs a little bit tired, feeling the effects of the games played in the previous night. And it worked itself out for Springfield, but the power play helped them late in that period as far as getting more chances. But I think the pace is definitely going to pick up in the second period of play because both coaches aren't going to settle for the efforts that were provided in the first period. I think the efforts will definitely pick up as we start the second period. Okay, a lot of action going on in the American Hockey League as we've passed the Christmas uh, holiday and approached the new year. Let's take a look at what's happening in the American Hockey League's Northern Division. There you see the Adirondack Red Wings against the uh, Maine Mariners fighting for that top spot. We saw Adirondack, we know that they're a very uh, good hockey club, although they're maybe a little bit weak in goal now with Mark LaForest up and some changes in the goal. Well, that's hurt them, of course, with LaForest who was playing great for them. Going up, Hanlon there early in the year. Now he is back with the New York Rangers. So the goaltending is up in limbo right now in Adirondack. But even with seven players on recall, they still put a great club on the ice. And the Indians capitalized on a first period lapse by them, scored five goals. And then even though they put on some pressure, the Indians put a big victory over Adirondack Thursday night. Okay, and there you see Fredericton, how important this game is tonight for the Express as they're battling also for that top spot in the division. Let's take a look at the Southern Division. There you see Springfield kind of uh, solidified in third place, although really five points behind second place and only three points ahead of the fourth place St. Catherine Saints, but it seems like Springfield's been solidified in that third place position for quite some time. Well, they have four games in hand on St. Catharines as we broadcast, but unless you win those games, they really don't mean very much, and the Indians have to be conscious of the teams behind them, both St. Catharines and Binghamton, who has beaten Springfield recently and has shown that they are not going to lay over and die either. So the Indians right in the thick of things, but in a good position where they are right now, right smack in the middle. Binghamton, a seven-game unbeaten streak currently in the American Hockey League, while New Haven on the other side of the coin haven't won in seven games. Let's take a look at what's happening as far as the Indians are concerned. And there you see Alan Kerr leading, but Terry Martin has really played very well for the Indians all year long and he picked up an insurance goal in that victory on Thursday night. Well, Martin's play has gone unnoticed. He's done it very, very quietly with extremely good work habits out there on the ice, always skating and leading by example. With Don Biggs gone now, he was the leading scorer with Springfield. Kerr establishes that lead, but Martin is picking up the pace also. And Ronnie Handy, not a bad year either for himself. Okay, taking a look at the American Hockey League stats, and no changes really uh, there. The same familiar faces as far as the top scorers are concerned. And, of course, Binghamton having Mark Taylor and Daryl Evans up there. Taylor's having a big year for the Whalers. Well, Taylor has picked it up as far as that is concerned, and he has shown well there with West Jarvis having the great start, putting him ahead. But Mark Taylor is the newcomer in that lot. He has surged into the thick of things. Okay, and let's take a look at the upcoming schedule. And, of course, the Indians facing the Hershey Bears of those four games. The big one will be Friday, January 3rd with the San Diego Chicken in town. Well, we'll have the game for everyone right here on Continental with a packed house expected. Should be a great game, but four games in as many nights. Very difficult task for the Springfield Indians, and it's not like they're playing any slouches as far as their opponents are concerned. Every game has some meaning, so a big week ahead for the Springfield Indians. Okay, and we hope uh, to see you fans here at the Springfield. Same familiar faces as far as the top scorers are concerned. And, of course, Binghamton having Mark Taylor and Darrell Evans up there. Taylor's having a big year for the Whalers. Well, Taylor has picked it up as far as that is concerned, and he has shown well there with West Jarvis having the great start, putting him ahead. But Mark Taylor is the newcomer in that lot. He has surged into the thick of things. Okay, and let's take a look at the upcoming schedule. And, of course, the Indians facing the Hershey Bears of those four games. The big one will be Friday, January 3rd with the San Diego Chicken in town. Well, we'll have the game for everyone right here on Continental with a packed house expected. Should be a great game, but four games in as many nights. Very difficult task for the Springfield Indians, and it's not like they're playing any slouches as far as their opponents are concerned. Every game has some meaning, so a big week ahead for the Springfield Indians. 
Okay, and we hope uh, to see you fans here at the Springfield Civic Center on the weekend. And of course, if uh, you can get your tickets, there's still some tickets available for Friday night again at the San Diego Chicken in Town. We hope to see you then. Okay, the Springfield Indians and the Express of Fredericton scoreless after one. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Many people with diabetes need more than just insulin to get by because diabetes is the number one cause of new blindness in adults and it's responsible for 20,000 amputations every year and it's a major contributor to heart and kidney disease. Of course, while many people with diabetes need these things to get by, all of them need you to get by. Support the American Diabetes Association. Fight some of the worst diseases of our time. Welcome back, everyone. Between periods one and two, no score between the Fredericton Express and the Springfield Indians. And another familiar face, he's come back to join us between periods one and two, the vice president of the American Hockey League, Gordy Anziano. Gordy, Merry Christmas, and in the Thank process, you, yeah. Happy you. New Year. And we're right. just about coming toward the halfway point of the 1985-86 season. If you can give the American Hockey League a report card thus far, what would it be? Well, I'd say the report cards, I'll tell you this, would be a heck of a lot better than the ones I used to get when I was in school. The uh, the patient is doing very well. Uh, We're looking for a little upswing in attendance. It hasn't been all that good, but it certainly isn't a panic situation. We're not in the uh, emergency zone, if you will. Intensive care is out of the question. We're going ahead. Uh, there was a great upswing as we went into November as far as attendance was concerned. And uh, last night we had four games. This is a good time right between the Christmas and New Year's holiday. And we averaged almost 4,000 last night in the four games played, and that's a real plus. Any reasons you can touch on maybe why the attendance has slacked off a little bit, or is it just one of those things, and after the holidays it should pick up? I, I will say this, that it normally picks up after the holidays, and it normally, the reverse side of that coin is that it's down in October and November. It was down a little bit more this year, John, than it, it normally is. So we, it, it gave cause for a little concern, but, and I emphasize the little, because I don't think it's anything to be concerned about to the extent to where you'd be that worried about it. If it continues into January and February, then of course the individual clubs involved would be more concerned, but I, I don't see a bad situation yet. Gordy, in this day and age with players coming and going from many of the American Hockey League franchises, check the newspapers every morning, there are some transactions involved. Is the league concerned at all that maybe there's some identity as far as the fans are concerned gone because the players on different franchises come and go so frequently? John, there's no question the, the problem of identity arose many years ago when we went into the development era, so to speak. The uh, age of the players sticking around uh, just doesn't exist anymore. A, a good example of that is just the other day I had some time and I thought I'd go through and compile some career stats and compare them to those that are in the current guide and uh, there's nobody even close. I mean, somebody's played uh, 390 games. That's, uh, that's a career high among the players in the league this year. And the, the career highs or the all-time highs are in the six and 700. So identity in that respect is a problem. I think the addition of the helmets also caused us somewhat of an identity problem. So much so that we finally uh, went to putting names on the sweaters where that was really a no-no years ago. And it was always felt that that would cut into the program sales. but. In order to get some identity, we had to put the names on. I think television also had a lot to do with that. With the exchange of players, uh, that too obviously adds to the identity problem. Uh, it was a major concern to us when it first came about, and that's maybe five or six years ago. But it hasn't shown itself to be that ugly a thing because the fans still are responding, and we still have a very viable 13-team league. So. Uh, I guess it isn't really that big a problem. Present day, the American Hockey League, as you mentioned, 13 clubs, extremely strong. And searching for identity this year in the 50th anniversary, I know a promotion is going to kick off with the all-time team balloting for the American Hockey League itself. Gordy, if you could touch upon that promotion itself, how it is going to work, and some of the names that you can recall, you know, I don't want you to write a list because we could be here all night, but just some of the names that could conjure some, some inkling in some of the fans' minds. What we did, uh, John, in order to come up with a, a ballot which we thought was fair, is we originally, uh, I say originally, back in October or so, November, we sent out letters to those people who, in, in Jack Butterfield, in my, my opinion, uh, were people who would be very familiar with the American Hockey League 
uh, as far back as we could go. Unfortunately, there really aren't too many people left that were around when we first started in 1936. And we asked them to give us the names of those who they thought, thought would be a, a good addition to the ballot. Uh, we compiled a ballot. Uh, we negotiated with the Hockey News, and they are co-sponsoring the balloting of it. It will begin on the 27th, ballot, uh, 27th of January. Uh, ballots will be available in each of the rinks. It will be printed in Hockey News, and we're planning some special moves in areas like Buffalo, Pittsburgh, where we once existed, and, and so forth. I think, I think in the long run, John, it's going to be very interesting because uh, obviously the modern-day player is going to be favored because we have modern-day fans. And a lot of players who were brilliant in their short careers in the American Hockey League have to have some recognition. And the, the, one of the names that comes to mind right away is Johnny Bauer. I, no better goaltender, maybe, in the, in the National League annals, but, and, and a great goaltender in the American League. But his career was relatively short in an era when careers were longer, as we were touching on uh, before that. Um, obviously, you can think of great guys like Bob McCord and Bill Sweeney and uh, uh, Marcel Paiv in recent times, uh, Paul Gardner, uh, the current uh, point scoring leader with 135 points. But then you can go back to some names that geez, Jack Butterfield came up with some names that were a little bit even before my time, although I've, I've been around for 50 years, but I didn't work for the American Hockey League for 50 years. So uh, I think it's going to prove interesting. Obviously, anytime you have an all-star ballot, you're going to have controversy as to fans' opinions of who should and who shouldn't be. And, that's okay, really, because uh, I kind of subscribe to the theories. As long as they're talking about us, then we're okay. Marty, let's let's fill the fans in a little bit about your own personal makeup as far as being the vice president of the American Hockey League. How you got started in this line of work, I know you're from the local area here, and how it all began for yourself, and I know it's become a mission of love for you. You love what you do, and you have to because the hours you do put in, but fill the fans in a little bit on the background of Gordy Anziani. Well, I, my background as far as hockey is concerned started when I was employed uh, in 1960 uh, with the Springfield newspaper. I was a sports writer there until 1968 and of course during the period of time I was there I covered hockey but mostly on the junior and the minor uh, high school uh, levels. At that time of course I got to know Jack Butterfield who at that time was the general manager of the Indians and Eddie Shore ran a, a fabulous program called the Greater Springfield Junior Amateur League. That was pretty much my assignment area and as I got to know Jack I uh, uh, I got, as I say, I got to know him pretty well, and, and Jack Button at that time was the secretary and publicity director of the American League, and he left to go to Pittsburgh. Jack Riley, the president, left. Jack Butterfield took over and cornered me one day and said, I would like to go to work for the American Hockey League, and that was 1968, and I think that's about 18 years ago, and uh, I'll tell you, I would wish that everyone in the world should get up every morning and want to go to work as much as I do. Gordy, I know you enjoy your work because you exude that every time we see you, and I'd like to wish you the best of luck in 1986 as we turn the corner and head in. Any wishes for the new year as far as the American Hockey League is concerned? Well, yes, I'd like to see the attendance go up and the penalties go down, but I, uh, maybe maybe one of them will work. I'm not too sure about the penalties, but uh, that's that would be my wish as far as the league is concerned. Gordy, have a, have a good new year and much success to you in the Thank future. You, Gordy Anziano, the Vice President of the American Hockey League, has been our guest between periods. We'll be back with the second period of tonight's game featuring the Fredericton Express and the Springfield Indians right after this. of the Philadelphia Eagles. It took a lot of training, hard work, and encouragement to get where I am today. I wouldn't have had much...